God is here. Tell your neighbor, God is here. So today we'll be talking on restoration. Wow, I expect us to be excited. Restoration. Restoration means taking back, just like our sister that led us in the opening prayer. So I'll quickly just skip that because I believe we already heard the definition from her. The restoration God has promised us is not only to give us all we have lost, but to make us better versions of ourselves. Quickly, let's read Joel chapter 2, verse 25 and 26. Joel chapter 2, verse 25 and 20. And it says, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. If you believe that, say it louder. Amen. Amen. Quickly, for us to be restored, there are some things that we need to do. I want us to read Zechariah 9 verse 12. In good news translation, please. Thank you. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 12. Return, you exiles, who now have hope. Return to your place of safety. Now I tell you that I will repay you twice over with blessing for all you have suffered. That is restoration. The Lord says he will repay us how many times? Twice. But what was the first thing he asked us to do? Return. Can we have it in NLT version, please? Come back to the place of safety. All you prisoners who still have hope. I promise this very day that I will repay two blessings for each of your troubles. That is restoration. But there is a condition. And that is what we want to study today. Return back. Come back to the place. Tell your neighbor, come back. Return back. We must come to the realization that we haven't been doing the will of God. Today I'm speaking to the youths. We must come to the realization that we haven't been doing the will of God. Not until we reach that turning point, we cannot be restored. We have to turn back. The Lord has promised us that he is going to restore us. He said he will pay us twice all what we have lost. That is restoration. For us to gain that restoration, for us to assess that restoration, he is telling us today that we should do what? Return back. Let us have that turning point. Come back. Come back. Retrace our, let us retrace our steps. Let's have Proverbs chapter 22 verse 28. KJV then TPT version. KJV first, then TPT version. Proverbs 22, 28. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Youths, are we in the house this morning? Remove not the ancient landmarks. In our generation, we have not only removed it, we have even destroyed the landmark. In fact, that landmark is not even there again. Can we have it in TPT? TPT, the Passion Translation, please. You don't have? Okay, it says, the Passion Translation says, Remove not, don't you dare move them. That was, that's the particular way he put it. He said, don't you dare move them. The ancient landmarks that our fathers have set, in our generation, we have removed it. We have destroyed, in fact, the landmark is no what? Is no longer there. Hmm. Is God speaking to us this morning? And again, we have forgotten that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same yesterday, the way Jesus was yesterday. That's the same way he is today. And that is how we will be forever. A lot of people, we have changed, you know. We are trying to allow Jesus to suit us. We have tried to change and, you know, we have removed the ancient landmark. Jesus is the same. He doesn't change. The way he was in the olden days. This is our generation that we are saying woke generation. Or... And they were sleeping. Now we are awake in our generation. We are deceiving ourselves. Jesus Christ is what? The same. When you say something is the same, what does it mean? What does the same mean? The same is the same. 
the same way he was in the past. That is the same way he is now. And that is how he will forever be. So why are we changing the standards? Why are we moving the standards? Praise the Lord. This verse, you know, we even have it here. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We hear it every now and then. The day I took time to read Hebrews 13, 8. The day I took time to read the, version, um, the verse before, that's verse 7 and verse 9. I realized that, that that verse actually means much. Can we have it in message version, please? Verse 7, Hebrews 13, verse 7. Appreciate your pastoral leaders who gave you the word of God. Take a good look at the way they live and let their faithfulness instruct you as well as their truthfulness. There should be a consistency that runs through us all. Tell your neighbor, a consistency. Jesus Christ is the same. So there's supposed to be that consistency. The way Jesus walked through the men of old, the way he's walking through our elders, he is the same way. He's supposed to let us stop bringing down the standard. Jesus is the same. There should be a consistency. Let's have verse 8. For Jesus doesn't change. Can we, can we see that in our Bible? Is it there? Jesus doesn't. Tell your neighbor, Jesus doesn't change. Now that we have agreed according to the scripture that we need to turn back. Now we have reached that turning point, then we need to begin a fresh start with God. You know, we are coming from restoration. We said for God to restore us, according to that verse we read in Zechariah, we said there must be a what? A turning point. And when we reach that turning point, we now begin a fresh start with God. Tell the person sitting next to you, I am beginning afresh with God. Say it like you mean it. I am beginning afresh with God. Now, the things to note when starting afresh with God, I'll be giving us four things quickly. Things to note when starting afresh with God. Number one, are we there? Number one, sin is sin. Yes, write it down. Number one, sin is what? Sin. This is how we have moved the landmark. When the former generation started, things were clearly sin. Lying was a sin. Stealing was a sin. I mean the former generation. Gossiping was a sin. Fornication was a sin. Masturbation was a sin. Pornography was a sin. Adultery was a sin. But what do we have now? Do you know what our generation call it now? Let me tell you. They call it weakness. Yes. They now, they've painted sin and they call it weakness. What do we hear? We say, ah, there's this thing I'm struggling with. This is my weakness. There's this thing that I've been struggling with. And nobody is perfect. So it's my weakness. There's nobody. Listen. Until we'll go back to the time when sin was known as sin. You will not be able to stop it. The people in the past, when they knew sin as sin, they see it as, the Bible is very clear. The wages of sin is death. And in Galatians chapter 5, we, the Bible listed all the sins, verse 19 to 21. Everything that is a sin is listed there. Why are we now coining it to suit ourselves? What is the issue with us youths? What exactly is the issue? We coin it and say, ah, it is a weakness. I'm just, there's this thing, I'm, nobody is perfect, so I'm okay. Sin is sin. There is no other name. Sin is not weakness. Sin is is sin. That is number one. Number two, follow Jesus closely. We are talking of, you know, when we want to start afresh with God, the things we need to know. While we are still, we don't repeat what we were doing in the past. Number one, we said sin is sin. Number two, follow Jesus closely. Let us read Mark chapter 14 verse 54. Mark chapter 14 and verse 54. And Peter followed him afar off, even into the place, into the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Peter did what? He followed him afar off. Do you know what Peter later did in that verse? He denied Jesus. Read it. Why? He followed Jesus afar off. Tell your neighbor, follow Jesus closely. Carry Jesus on your head. 
Let everybody around you know that you are a child of God. As a youth, stop doing one leg in, one leg out. What is the issue with us? Carry Jesus on your head. Your phone rings and it's a Christian music because your house, you quickly cut it so that they will not hear. I mean, carry, let's take a stand. Let Jesus know that you, you are, you are, you know, you know the reason why Peter followed, uh, Peter denied Jesus. He followed afar off. If Peter had followed Jesus closely, it would have been difficult for him to deny Jesus. Don't follow Jesus afar off. Follow Jesus closely. Put all your body inside Jesus. Because he can never fail. He can never disappoint. That is the only surest foundation we have. Follow Jesus closely. I wonder how we have youths of nowadays that they are Christians. They, they call themselves believers and they still listen to worldly songs. You are following Jesus afar off. Do you know what worldly songs does? They, they invite demons to your life. You don't know. And there's something my mom used to tell me when I was very young. And she used to say, when you, are in, when you need something, you are in need. Who do you call? You call Jesus. Do you call David O? Do you call uh, um, whiskey? All those people. Do you call? They cannot even answer you. Why are you not promoting them? When you need them, they will never be there for you. Why not promote that person that sticks closer than a brother? Why not promote that person that will always be there? Come what may. Stop deceiving yourself. Put all your life inside Jesus. Follow Jesus closely. Number three. Get busy serving God. Number one, we say sin is sin. Number two, follow Jesus closely. Number three, get busy serving God. You know, there are times when our father in the Lord, Pastor Loyo, we call people and say, if you want to join the workforce and things like that, and I'll be amazed to see adults more than the youths. I'll be amazed to see some people still seated. Why, why have you chosen to be an anointed bench warmer? Why? Why? As a youth, we have strength to serve. Why not serve God? Get busy, serve everything we are. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom. You are looking for husband. You come to the church. When you just look around, you say, ah, Omo. Omo, like my mommy would say. You know, you look around and you say, there's no suitable husband here. You quickly jump to another church. You know what? Let us read Psalm 92 verse 13. Psalm 92 verse 13. Quickly, please. Psalm 92 verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall do what? Planted. Note that word. Planted. Not those that are jumping from one place to another. Planted. Stay where God has put you. Stay there. You know, there are people that tell me, ah, Redeemed Christian Church of God is now an old church. You know, we now have new generation churches. Some of my friends, they come to tell me, we have new generation churches. And all that. Listen. You know, the funny thing about these new generational churches, I honor them and I respect them. But you need to be careful. I was scrolling through Instagram one day and I saw a pastor that said, because we are now the righteousness of God in Christ, so all our sins, no matter what we, no matter the sin, it has already been forgiven and we are not going to heaven. Heaven is coming to us. Hallelujah. And the youth were jumping and shouting, we are not going to heaven. Heaven is coming to us. Where is it in the Bible that heaven is coming to us? Stay where God has served there. Stay there is blessing, immense blessing in serving God. Immense blessing in serving God. So what is point number three? Get busy serving God. Throw, there's a part of the verse, the Bible that says, throw yourself inside the service of God. Throw yourself inside. Stop warming the bench. Enough of, you know, God has promised to restore us, right? And we have chosen to turn, to let, to, you know, take that U-turn. And we have chosen to start afresh with God. Make up your mind. 
enough of coming to church 9 a.m., 10 a.m., when you, when you will. Come early. Join a department and serve. Glory to Jesus. Number four, which is the last point. Choose to be led by the Spirit of God. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Choose to be led by the Spirit of God. How, 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 how would that be possible? Number one, pray always. Pray all the time. Strategic prayers. Pray the word. Like Mommy Olowo, you we always say, pray the appropriate the word into your life. That is how you can do what? Be led by the Spirit of God. Pray the word of God over your life. A very good way we can have it. Go to the go to Google. Google is, I mean, it has made life easy for us. Pick a topic. If it is depression, go there. Type Bible verses on depression. It will come out. Write all of them down and start conf- take them like tablets. You know when you somebody is sick and the doctor prescribes tablets for you morning, afternoon, and night. Take it like tablets. Confess in the morning. Confess in the night. Confess. Depression will fly out. Yes, it will fly. If it is wisdom you need, Bible verses on wisdom, type it on Google. Confess it over your life. As you are confessing, you are praying. We are praying the word. We are not just praying, you know. And if you can pray in the spirit, amazing. Pray in the spirit and pray the word. Number two, study the word. Listen to messages. Listen to messages. It is an error in this current generation. This, this, where Nigeria is going and where, you know, our generation is going. It is an, a big error for you to go a day without listening to a message. Yes, it is an error. We have plenty of messages to listen to. Feed your spirit. Feed your inner man with the spirit of God. The way you eat, and you, you know, if you don't eat in the morning, how do you feel? You feel down, you feel hungry, you feel weak. I won't, you know, you wake up in the morning and you just go, you don't feed your spirit with the word, and you expect your spirit to be alive. Is it possible? It's not possible. Feed your inner man. Listen. We, in fact, there is an app that collated so many messages. We have message of Pastor Adebo Yede. We have messages of Apostle Selman. We have messages of Bishop Oyede, plenty great men of God. Their messages are there, just one click, and you have access to all their messages. So what is our excuse? Make up your mind to listen to at least a message in a day. And also the prayer we're talking about, we said, you know, I said we should pray always. We have hour of victory in our parish. How many of us join our hour of victory? How many? I know a lot of us might not be able to come physically, but virtually, how many of us join our hour of victory? You will say, ah, this and that. How many of us join? Mighty prayers are being led here. Pray over your life. Hide your destiny inside prayers. Pray over your life. The Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. So today we've been able to establish that for God to restore us, number one, we must turn around. Number two, we must know some particular things. This new time, that this new way, you know, that we are walking, this new you, there are some particular things you must know. Number one is what? I can't hear you, please. Number two, closely, closely, take him inside you, like closely. Number three, Get busy. Number four. Please, shall we rise on our feet? I want us to pray and say, Lord, please help me to start afresh with you and restore me. Please open your mouth and pray. Father, help me to start afresh with you and restore me. Help me to take my walk with you seriously as a youth in this generation. Not to remove the ancient landmark. Ah, Lord, help me. Help me. Are you praying? That is the only way we can survive in this time. Help me, Lord. 
to follow you closely so that everyone around you will know that I am for Christ. I will, I will be your representative. 